All right, guys, so Fulu coming to you with another commentary. This is going to be two-part commentary. Um, you know, the crazy thing is, um, you know, uh, that Af African women do have a version of feminism, but it's but the African women's version of feminism is not what... Um, what is shown you know it's not it's not what is shown here you know in fact they don't show it so and there's a reason for that you know because it would lead to more i guess you could say um uh, uh cohesiveness between men and between women and i guess they i guess they the reason why they don't show things like this is because of the simple fact that you know, um, this is something they don't want, you know, uh, now this came from Malawi's, uh, former president, Joyce Banda, and we can listen to it and just see the complete, how it's polar opposites of what goes on here. So, Are not becoming leaders now we were leaders before colonization and it's true you know um women had you know before colonization women did have leading roles you know uh you had nana Asma'u, rahma to Lay, you had queen amina you had a couple of people you know Ghana, Nigeria, Africa. We we had the, we had the queens, we had the emperors, we had the women. When you read research, they will tell you that in fact it is colonization that slowed us down, because where they were coming from to come and colonize us, they didn't have women in their structure. And that's true. Um, I mean, when you look at it, uh, like what happened was basically we had women played a role in you know african society very much so but then when colon colonialization came we kind of adapted their their views on women you know and their views on women were basically that you know that, like women you know they they really didn't like they really didn't matter much you know so they didn't know what to do with us so we were pushed aside. But you will find that when our brothers started fighting for self rule, Kwame Nkrumah, Jomo Kenyatta, Kamuzubanda, everybody, the women rose to the occasion and we joined our brothers and we fought. It's true. Um, you look at the EPLF um, in Eritrea who fought the Ethiopians for their independence. And, um, you know, a lot. there were a lot of women cadres. You look at even my dad's own um, uh, cadre P A I G C, which had a lot of women cadres. You look at uh, for Limo in Mozambique, they had a lot of women cadres. You look at Angola in P L A, they had female cadres as well, who would fight side by side by the men, and you know would fight in different ways, not necessarily all the time being on the battlefield. And the same thing with Haitian Revolution as well. So when we say open up space, we want to sit there and participate in leadership. We're not really coming from the blues. We are coming from where we've already done it in the past. Now, what I have found, having risen to the position of president myself in my country, is that the men, African men, have accepted that we shall be leaders as well. But it is how we are, our approach. African women are trained negotiators. And that's African women know that by confronting our men, by being rude to our men, by marching on the streets, by yelling and screaming, we shall not get them to support us. And that's that's very true. Um, and and that's the thing. Like um, these feminists, what happens is, not only do they march on the street, not only do they yell at men, 
but they blame men for all their issues. They blame men for all their troubles. And, you know, by them doing that, it actually um, is detrimental to what they're trying to achieve because a man's just going to leave you alone. You know, he's going to be like, okay, well, if, if, if that's the case, psh, bye. You know, that's what a man's going to, going to do really. Uh, so, you know, th this is just what it is. Um, so, so again, um, they understand that, you know, how these women are in the West that that's that's not going to be the way to redemption that's not going to be the way to salvation and it's not going to be the way to progress because you see the effects of feminism in the west with these women you know you see the effects and so this is why i tell other africans you shouldn't bring these foreign ideas in if you don't want the same effects you know african women know that we shall achieve more if we engage our men if we work with them, if we talk to them. And it's true, you know, um, men, we, we operate off of logic and we operate off of those things. So if a, if a woman is to come to us like um, and they have valid points and they have valid like needs and stuff like that, and it makes sense, of course, we're going to take heed and listen to it. But, um, you know, the, the Western feminists, it, everything is unrealistic you know with her you know very unrealistic so it it gets to a point where you're like asking the western feminists well what do you want what is it that you want you know that's that's kind of what that's kind of what happens it's like you're 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 wondering like okay what 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 is it that you want do you even know what you want anymore? The country with the highest number of women in, in the world, in, in parliament, is Rwanda. It's on the continent of Africa. And the president after president in Africa are actually appointing 50% of their cabinet. Female. And Africa has had five presidents. Tell me how many presidents America has had in 200 years. That was... Well... Also, the problem is the choices of president for for female presidents in um, America um, have not been good. You know, Kamala Harris, Hillary Clinton. I mean, no disrespect, but they're warmongering Jezebels themselves who support Israel. So the choices haven't been really good for female presidents in um in America either, you know, that's another issue. Zero. Why? Because our men, us as Africans, had seen that before. It is not strange that a woman can lead a nation. But I also believe that if I tell you that President Ramaphosa appointed 50% and President Kagame appointed 50% of his cabinet, women, African Union, half, half, uh, Ethiopia, the women did not scream. The women did not march. If they had marched, the, the reverse would have been the result. Uh, and, and that's and that's the thing. Don't treat an African man like that. Okay, that's listen, not how we treat listen, our men. Listen. Fifty percent. And President listen. Kagame appointed fifty percent of his cabinet women, African Union, half half, uh, Ethiopia. The women did not scream. The women did not march. If they had marched. The, the reverse would have been the result. Uh, you don't treat an African man like that. And so... That's not how we treat our men in order to get them to do what we want. We and so this is the... Um, I mean, I should just listen to the whole thing, you know, so we can just break it down. Let's listen to the whole thing. The women did not match. If they had matched, the, the reverse would have been the result. Uh, you don't treat an African man like that. That's not how we treat our men in order to get them to do what we want. We respect them, we engage them, we talk to them to open space. That is my feminism. I have told my friends, this is what will work for us. And, and so 
you know, and this is the thing, like, this is why I, you know, um, I disengaged myself with, and I told my, my family back home, you don't have to worry about me bringing a black American woman back to the village. You know, there's no, you don't even have to worry about me doing that. You don't even have to tell me like, you don't have to tell me like, don't bring a Bellagio back here. You know, I I say no problem. I'm not gonna bring a, a Devil Vallejo back. You know, it's no problem, um, because this is what they've been taught to do: is disrespect their men, uh, to be combative, and to have no order. So you don't have to worry about me even bringing that to the village when they're not gonna even be get used to the customs or something you know the only thing you have to worry about is if i decide to get you know maybe someone from the geographic area that we're from um you know mali like in that area mali mauritania hell um you know even uh muslim majority nigeria no problem Although we're different people uh, and we have different clans of like Fulani and different like groups in that area, we, we, I'm pretty sure we're going to have our common denominator, you know, being the religion, but also just being, you know, similar customs too. So. The, these women here, unfortunately, have been trained to be combative and bring and and also, unfortunately, it trickles down to their sons. You know how they talk to their sons and how they um, just treat their men folk in general. You know, um, it's it's pretty bad. You know, and it's opposite of what she says. So. You know, like, do the? I mean, for feminists who think they can come to Africa and like bring these ideas, I I don't think it's gonna fly that much. You may get little pockets of females who may, you know, adhere to it because they're been westernized, but I don't think it's gonna fly that much as you guys think it is. I'll give you an example. The African Union office in Washington, D.C. organized an event to honor me and Ellen Selif. And I think it was 2017. And invited the Africans living in Washington, and as well as the Americans too. And question time, a lady who is Nigerian by nationality, but was born and raised in the United States, so comes back and forth to Nigeria. She said, Joyce Panda, tell me, I go back home, And I tell my fellow women, let's fight. It's our time. Let's rise and confront these men. But they're timid. Okay, so that's the thing. You have like certain like westernized African women. You know, they take the ideas that they got from here and they try to bring it back home. Especially among Nigerians, you know, especially among the southern Nigerians. There's actually one Northern Nigerian I know that really took that thing by the horn. And, you know, unfortunately it led her to being divorced twice, you know, because um, she was, shit, she's a handful, you know what I mean? And um, that's the thing. It, it, It got down to the you can't handle me syndrome, where in reality what it was is you were a headache to handle, you know, I mean, because naturally men are stronger than women. So, you know, a man can handle a woman, but the question is, does he want to handle a woman who is just set out on being rebellious and set out on hating men? You know what I mean? You don't want to listen to me. So you see the difference between that feminism and ours. So my question back to her was, oh, so you want them to follow this feminism here? 
She said, yes. I said, is it working here? Tell me if it is working here. How many women have you got in parliament? 18%. And we have countries that have 63% on the continent of Africa. And you are disappointed that that is the case and not 18%. Have they? Uh, yeah, you know, it's crazy because you have that in different third world countries too, where, you know, women, a lot of women are in parliament. You have it in Cuba, a lot, a lot of women in, are in uh, parliament. You have even with a lot of women in parliament in Cabo Verde too. You know, you have a lot of them there too uh, that are in parliament as well. They achieved equal pay for equal work here in America? Not yet. I said, then tell me why this is better than our own. So it is just the perception that we have. That because for the longest time people have looked down upon us, we also beat ourselves instead of encouraging ourselves and being proud that as Africans we've done well. We've really done well. Five female presidents. Liberia, Central African Republic, Malawi, Mauritius, and now Ethiopia. Now, granted though, I will say that the, um, the woman who got put in president Central African Republic, that was a French job. I'm not gonna even cap, you know, the, the French the French set that up so she can get in. I'm I'm just being real. You know, I'm not trying to like discount her, but the French set that up to get her in. You know, I mean, as a matter of fact, I think France oversaw that election in Central Africa Republic. You know, so you know, that's just that's just what how the how the um cars fall, you know what I mean. Five. I mean some some parts of the world are still trying to get one. So Africa has not done badly. So I yes, I am a feminist, but an African one. So you see, you know, you see the difference. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure that she is not com as you see, she's not combative with women or, or or combative with men and stuff like that. And she knows how to, you know, come to a place with a man of of logic. You know, and so this is this is why, you know, it is it's it's not in my interest to like mess with a Western black woman regardless of her, you know, cultural background. If she if she was like that Nigerian that she was talking about, I couldn't bring that Nigerian back to the village either because her ideas would like really not be welcomed, you know. Um, but this video came to mind, and uh, you know it's kind of unfortunate um, that it's like this, and it's just further ammo for me to, um, you know, like stay on my square and just leave the majority of these uh, women alone for the simple fact. Uh, it, that's you know you can be on your square you can be doing good things and it still would be uh, it still would not be measured up to them you know and i'm not saying all western black women are like this but i guess in this geographical area in which they're in this is how it went but let's go ahead and go gear up and get outside. Keeps you warm, but not too hot. It stretches evenly in all. <laughs> I need a drag dealer and then a skimmer. Then fuck the nine to five. So as you see, you know, doing something honorable, like these women don't like. Um, uh, so it, it shows that, like, you know, they don't believe in honor or integrity for, you know, for a reason. So, you know, I mean, that that's just the way it falls. But, you know. Um, so this is this is just where we're at in this situation. You know what I mean? Then the drug dealers, then the animal. They like the fast money over here. They got time. They can take you out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Jesus Not... Well, that's the thing. Like when you look at these 
corner guys when you look at like like these like petty criminals who are on the corner um they do have time you know they do have time however you know from someone who's been around this this lifestyle and you know witness this lifestyle firsthand if you're dealing with the guy who's moving like bricks like keys chances are he's not going to have time because he's going to be out of town you know he's going to be making trips you know up and down um where he where he's doing his business you know a, a, a guy who's really up there he's not going to mess with these women you know like a guy who's like moving bricks and stuff like that like he he's not going to mess with those you know he's going to mess with the the upper echelon you know you look at uh for example frank lucas you know um who i mean he of course, most of them snitch when the the pressure gets too hot but he said you know you saw in the movie you saw what his wife looked like you know what i mean like he he didn't have one of these you know what I mean? You saw what his wife was looking like in that movie. Uh, American Gangster, you know. So, um, they're talking about like the Pookie and the Ray Rays who are on the corner and stuff like that. And scamming, they probably are referring to checks and stuff like that. Uh, only take you out on the weekend. Right. What are the type of guys you prefer? Scammer, drug dealer, or non to follow? Drug dealer. I want him to move that way. Uh, okay, well, I mean, you know that comes with things, right? I mean, you you know you, you're going to be in the line of fire, too. If the stakes get really high in the drug game, because I've seen it. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. Where... It gets so critical that maybe a rival, a rival dealer kidnaps the other dealer's girl and holds her for ransom. Are, are you then going to want to be like, are you then going to want to be, um, you know what I mean? Like be... Are you then going to want to be in that lifestyle? <laughs> Respectfully, it is what it is. Scammer 9 to 5 drug dealer. Wow, that was quick. Oh, you had to plan it out. <laughs> I told the world I prefer 9 to 5, but I really want a scammer in my heart. No funny shit. <laughs> so, you know, with scammers, I don't know. There's different levels to scamming. You have, like, really white-collar scammers who... You know, sometimes they take whole banks. You know what I mean? Like, but then you have the lower level ones. They may do a couple of check scams and PPP loan frauds and stuff like that. But I, I guess what it is with these women is they get in a, for some reason, there's some kind of adventure in, in this for them. You know, a guy doing the right thing is boring. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, even if the guy doing the right thing, you know, his trajectory is uh, very high, you know, they're, th this generation is stuck with the love and hip hop um, story. This generation is stuck with those things, you know, so this is why they act the way they act. You know, this is why they are the way they are, you know, unfortunately, but. This is just how it goes, you know. You got us on that drug dealers. No. Nine to five. Nine to five. Nine to five. Drug dealers. Nine to five. And scammers. You know what most of them have in common, too, is the fake lashes and, you know, like the just the artificial look, you know. Um, the, and and again, you know, some guys like this. Some 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 are into this, you know. So, you know, uh, 
but the aftermath of it, of course, is going to be them being single mothers, you know, and um, um, even guys in that lifestyle too. Granted, you know, guys who are not just about self destruction, they're looking for a different route. Even, you know, most of the time they're they're in um they they're in survival mode so they're just doing what is around them they're not necessarily doing it for women you know um it's the same thing like in the area i came up in like most of the dirt that was being done wasn't to impress women it was being done out of necessary a survival mode you know then drug dealers wow. i mean i'm used to drug dealers so what i'm used to drug dealers i'm a drug dealer with nine to five i like a scammer yeah what's the other one drug dealer with nine to five drug dealer nine to five um i would say nine to five one two and three scammer three drug dealer two nine to five Nine to five, nine five one. one. All my nine to five what? fellas, we They're are working. winning. All us nine to five, we winning right now. They are working. You are working. You're your best. Okay. So, as you see, you know, and and I'm in in no way in my suggestion swirling. I'm not trying to say, oh, you should go and swirl, but if if you are like, for example, a dude who's raking in six figures and you have a legitimate job. Your options are going to be very open, you know, um, and so it becomes a question of would you rather come home to peace or would you rather come home to chaos? Because if you are a six figure guy and you decide, OK, well, maybe I'll try to change the mind of this um of this uh, uh, um, this uh, it, the um, these women, you know, then chances are it's not going to work, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is how I look at it, you know. You say a drug dealer or? Nah, it's a fault. Come on now. She knows she wants to escape. Don't ban it. No, don't ban her last. Let's just escape. Come on, what's it? Probably a scammer as long as he don't get me messed up in his little works. He could do whatever he needs to do. As long as he give me some bread, then he's good to go. As, as you say, you know, these women's souls are for sale, you know. It really, it, that's just how it goes, you know. That's just how, like, and so, like, when, for example, you know, these women, like, uh, unfortunately, like, a lot of these Pan-Africanist women come from this background, and now all of a sudden they're woke and stuff like that. It's not going to go down, though, like like. Other men are not going to want you, you know, like uh, I'll give an example, like you look at uh, the women who are with that cult carbonation, like. Like. Men who have resources aren't going to want them anymore. You know, you you just brought your your ghetto behavior in the name of like consciousness and you know we're we're like we're not going to want that you know we don't have time for that but for some reason they think we do scammer 100 percent Right? You said but the world got a nine to five, but you really want to scam. The world knows nine to five, you know, a, a clean cut man, but heck yeah, I want to scam. I'm not gonna lie. So, so you see, like, 
They're telling you their true colors. ...poder enviar dinero a tu familia así como lo hacen ellos, sin tanto trámite y sin papeleo. A drug dealer, I've been, I've messed with drug dealers before. They don't make no money, they be broke, so... Well, it depends on what kind of drug dealer you're messing with. As I said in the beginning of this segment, if you're messing with a drug dealer who has bricks, who is dealing with Colombians and Peruvians on that big scale, then they're making money. You know, uh, in Guinea-Bissau, they're making hella money. You know, they're making hella money building villas, businesses, cars. Unfortunately, as sad as it sounds, adding to the economy. If you're dealing on that level, then then they're making money. But uh, of course, I'm not recommending that. Oh. Wow, I mean, yeah. Strong dealer, nine to five scammer. <laughs> scammer, uh -huh. nine to five drug dealer. Does this woman even like listen to herself talk? Now, usually like if you're a drug dealer, for example, if you're like a small time drug dealer and you get maybe caught with a little bit of something, then, you know, depending on if it's your first offense or your second offense, you're not looking at that much time. However, if you're a scammer, you're looking at fe you're looking at federal time, you know. So, and federal time is they sentence you in months, not years. So, a judge will say, "Well, you got four hundred and eighty months." They're not going to tell you how many years you got. You know. I'm gonna take your pieces. Before we get into the meat So there you have it, you know, this is this is this is what like a lot of these uh black women want, you know. Um and so again, that's what I say, like you know, uh and in this video is mostly to my like my my fellow Africans and also my Caribbean homies, um, make sure that this doesn't spread to your community, you know, wherever your pockets of your community are in the United States. You know what I mean? Make sure it doesn't make sure it doesn't spread there, you know, because you don't want that in your family household. You don't want to have to deal with that in your in your household you know because it's rather chaotic when you when you have um these kind of elements you know what i mean so just just make sure that it, it doesn't get to that point you know um because i mean if it does you know it's going to be like a virus you know it's going to be like a plague and it's going to be hard to deal with you know, if you have your daughter saying, oh, this is what I want. I want like a scammer. I want like a drug dealer, you know, so just, yeah. But anyhow, um, uh, full of signing out, leave your thoughts and leave your comments. Enjoy it,